ARMS is the latest IP brought to us by Nintendo and is the first major new IP by them for the Nintendo Switch. ARMS is a game that is looking to capitalize on the pick up and play multiplayer aspect of the Switch and is looking to try and do what Splatoon did for the third person shooter genre but instead for the fighting arena type games. So how did Nintendo do with this new IP? Well I can tell you for sure the game will not leave you up in ARMS. ARMS' gameplay is very simple to get into. You pick one of 10 fighters to play as, and then you pick two arms from your pre-selected pool to fight with. Each arm is mapped to a button, or the Joy-Cons if playing with motion controls. The longer you hold the button, the more you can charge up an attack to land better damage, or depending on the arm you pick, you can add status effects as well. Due to the nature of the arms of different weight classes and effects, you have an almost limitless amount of combinations you can pick from for each character. So use this to your advantage and pick the arms that best suit your playstyle. Like I stated earlier, arms for the most part is an easy game to learn, but due to the nature of the arms, there's a lot of depth to different playstyles. While each arm is mapped to a Joy-Con or button, there's also a lot more you can do. You can grab your opponents to perform powerful throws, perform special moves once you have a full meter, these moves will vary depending on your arms you have equipped, and each fighter has their own special gimmick to help in mobility or trying to turn a tide of battle in their favor. For example, Min Min, Ribbon Girl, and Mechanica all have special abilities that give them great movement advantages in battle, while fighters like Helix, Spring Man, and Master Mummy have their gimmicks which allows them to turn a course of the fight in their favor. Since no fighter has objectively a bad gimmick, matchups never really feel uneven and always boil down to the knowledge you have of your arms. When it comes to the overall controls of this game, I have to recommend playing this game with the Switch Pro Controller, in handheld mode, or with the single Joy-Con. While the game is advertised as a motion control game, I feel as if though the motion control really isn't there. While the motion controls do give you more precision in your punches, this is paid for a lack of mobility compared to the analog stick. The entire time I played with motion controls, I felt as if I was on rails and wasn't able to perform split-second decisions in the best way I could, which in a fighting game could be the difference of victory and defeat. However, this is just how I feel about them. I feel like this could have been refined a lot more for this game. Seeing as this is how the game was advertised, I was kind of let down, but I just used the option to play with the standard controller. If you want to take the time to master the motion controls, have at you. When it comes to content, ARMS does have quite a bit to go around in terms of multiplayer content off and online. When it comes to single player, however, I feel like the game is quite lacking. For single player, you'll be spending most of your time playing in the Grand Prix, 1 vs 100 or Get Arms. Grand Prix acts as a gauntlet in which you must face off against 10 fighters to win the championship belt. While this is good to practice and the difficulty settings will keep you on your toes, I was overall disappointed with it. I was expecting a little bit more depth in terms of story. Again, we have 10 very colorful fighters with their own heritage and backstory, and none of that is ever explored. They are only fighting in the Grand Prix to win the belt, and that's about it. I feel like a story would have added a lot to the Grand Prix, especially one that would explain the game's lore better and explain the motives of each fighter. In Get Arms, you'll be using your spoils from the online and offline modes to unlock more arms. You are put in a target arena and must break the targets to have a chance to win more arms. So if you want to upgrade your current arms or get new ones, you'll have to play all of the modes to win currency to go to the range. If you unlock the same arms multiple times, you unlock special upgrades for said arms so it, ne so it never feels like you wasted your time playing to get new arms. Heck, you may be even spending time to try to further upgrade your favorite pair. And finally, 1 vs 100 is self-explanatory. You take on 100 DNA men to see how fast you can beat them. It's nothing special and acts more as an endurance test if anything else. Another game mode you'll be spending most of your time in is probably the ranked matches. In order to unlock the ranked match mode, you must complete the Grand Prix on level 4 difficulty or higher. Once unlocked, you'll be playing for glory against players around the world. In my time in ranked matches, I never noticed any issues outside of wait times but that may have more to do with the pool being slightly smaller before launch. While you are waiting to be put into a ranked battle, you have access to everything the game has to offer while you wait, something I'm glad they put in so I can sharpen my skills in some warm-up matches as I wait for my opponent. Now onto the meat of the gameplay. You have your standard versus matches which you can set up lobbies for or join in random battles. I gotta say the lobby system in this game is really on point and gives you a ton of customization as to how you want to go about your battles and rotations with friends. 
The most common mode I assume you'll be playing is the standard 1v1 arena mode. It acts the exact same way it does in the Grand Prix. Playing against other players is a blast as well. And in online, I never noticed any technical issues with the game. There is also tag team matches, free for all with up to four friends, and gimmick modes such as basketball, volleyball, and an interesting hidden one. All of these game modes minus tag team and free for all are a ton of fun to play. I spent hours in these modes online and offline with friends and had a blast. That said, ARMS isn't without its faults and you should be aware of some of them. One of my biggest issues with this game, next to the lack of more single player content, is the lack of mappable buttons. Like mentioned earlier, your punches are mapped to the A and B button, your jump and special ability is mapped to X and Y, with your guard being mapped to pressing the left stick. You cannot change these presets. I was honestly baffled by this, as the game offers many different ways to play, yet doesn't offer you a chance to customize it. I feel the lack of mapping buttons may hurt the game in the long run if it ever wants a competitive scene. I would kill to map my guard button to one of the triggers instead of the counterintuitive way of pressing the left analog stick in. The next issue I have with this game is the free for all and tag team matches. While in volleyball mode, tag team makes a bit more sense, but in standard fighting you are tethered to your opponent and fight on maps that don't feel designed for tag team fights. I honestly feel as if the tag team mode was an afterthought to this game. If they were to remove the tether and add a better selection of maps made for this playstyle, it could be more viable. And free for all just boils down to everyone ganging up on one person. It's really not fun. Especially if there's that one person everyone is ganging up on. At the end of the day, ARMS is a fun, over-the-top fighting game for the Nintendo Switch. I had a blast playing this game offline and online, and the many different playstyles this game has to offer has me coming back to see which one will be the right fit for me. In terms of multiplayer games, I honestly believe this is one of the best ones on the Switch right now, especially if you're looking for an easy pick-up-and-play game to play with friends. If you are a person who would probably spend more time in a single-player environment, I would be wary for this purchase. That said, with the promise of more free content from Nintendo, I will always have this game within arm's reach. And that does it for our review of ARMS! To see the full written review, be sure to check out our website GamingGamma.com, a link to that review will be provided down in the description bar below. And if you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a comment as well and let us know what you guys think of the review and if you're picking up ARMS. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe for future Let's Plays, reviews, commentaries, and more. And as always everyone, thanks for watching.